All right, so has this ever happened to you where you basically, you come up with this idea for a project that you wanna build and you get so excited about it that you just wanna start building it straight away? After a couple hours or days, you realize that the project that you thought were going to be just two files and a couple lines of code has now turned into a project with 15 files and hundreds of lines of code. And you know that a lot of the files contain code that's no longer in use anymore, but you're unsure of which specific files. So you don't want to remove any because that might accidentally break the entire code base. And you also know that there's a bug somewhere within this giant mess of code that you need to fix, but that you can't find. So not that that's happened to me or anything, but I know a friend of mine who it happened to and because I was away in town that day. So otherwise I of course would have helped him, but I was away so I couldn't help him. Uh, so yeah, anyway, whenever that's happened to me, I've always found myself, he, whenever that, when that happened to him, he found himself because I was, like I said, I was away in town that day. I was actually, I was buying a t-shirt that day. So yeah, I, I wasn't there, but he always found himself asking the question of what is the optimal way to set up a programming project to maintain structure and organization from the start. So that's what I thought I'd help you answer in this video. This means how to set up the folder structure for your project and the best practices used here, how to use the GitHub workflow for version control and project management, picking the right text editor for the job and setting up routines for writing quality code and maintaining your code base, the tools and techniques that I will describe in this video will help you maintain both structure and organization in your programming projects. And they will also help you speed up your workflow by making you a way more efficient programmer. So yeah, let's get started. And here is the workflow that I recommend using based on the research that I've done. First of all, let's set up a main folder with a project name. After this has been done, we can initiate a GitHub repository. In order to maintain control of your project, it's important that you do this straight away. After this is done, we need to create organization within this folder. The first thing that we do is add a readme file within the project folder. A readme file is something that can be used in a couple of different ways. Mainly this is used as a place to write down some basic information about the project so that other people can then read the readme file and understand what your project is all about. It's also a pretty good place to write down some basic instructions for how to get the project set up. So essentially like a installation cheat sheet in a way. So for instance, this could be like things like which Python libraries do we need to install to get it up and running. A simple readme structure could be the title of the project followed by a short explanation of the project and then an installation guide where you have each step that's needed to get the project up and running written down. Now for larger projects, I do recommend actually creating a separate installation file where you write down all the instructions for how to get everything installed and everything set up. But in general, I think that you can put all this stuff into the readme file. The added or the installation file is essentially just an added layer of organization for the more OCD people out there. After this, we can create our first commit, which is the standard commit of added a readme file. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to set up folders or directories, whatever word you want to use. And this is where I would start by actually creating a .git ignore file. And here I suggest basically Googling what framework or languages you'll be using followed by .gitignore to find template gitignore files with the stuff that you will generally want to be putting in there. For the folders, what I would recommend is to create two folders, one folder called tests and another folder called SRC, which stands for source. The SRC folder or the source folder is essentially where you'll be putting your source code files. And this is something that a lot of people find or a few people find this kind of redundant to have this folder, but I really like to use it because I think that it adds a little bit more structure to my code base. And it also allows me to just find what I need within my code base a lot faster. If you're building a large project that you know will require a lot of files, then I really recommend creating subfolders within this source folder as well. And the folders here will depend a lot on the needs for your specific project. The project structure that I mostly use is the MVC protocol, which stands for Model View Controller. And this is a common structure used for web apps, mobile apps, and really anything that will have a user interface of some kind. This can also be used for pure backend development. And I think there's also like backend specific conventions here, but I'm not super knowledgeable on that. So maybe one of you guys actually know a little bit more about that. In that case, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and I'll try to pin the best one that I can find. So that's the basic folder structure and the MVC protocol or convention is something that I really recommend like reading up on a little bit on your own because if I was to explain this in this video, then that would pretty much require an entire dedicated video on its own. So I'm just gonna skip that for now, but 
there's lots of articles online where you can read up on it. So I really recommend just reading up on it a little bit. And I'll try to find some resources that I'll put in the description as well. Now we can create a new commit that we can push to our master branch saying that we've added directories to the project. All right, so there we have the basics of what we need locally on our computer set up. The GitHub repository is initiated and in use, and we have our folder set up in an organized way that will help us maintain structure when writing our code. Now, the next thing that I suggest doing is going to github.com and setting up a project board for your repository. But before we get into that, I just wanted to mention another way that's often overlooked when it comes to improving your productivity and efficiency as a programmer, which is improving your working space. Making sure that you have an ergonomic chair and enough space on your desk is such an important thing. And there are actually multiple studies that have shown that using a standing desk will help increase your cognitive ability. And here you can see the autonomous smart desk and ergo chair, which I've been using now for the past two weeks for my main workstation. Autonomous very kindly sent me this and agreed to sponsor this video. And if you use the discount code HALDEN21 with capital letters, you will get a 5% discount on their products. If you're watching this video to help improve your productivity and efficiency, but you do not have a standing desk or a proper chair, then I really think that you should take a look at Autonomous's products. It's perfect for programmers or students to spend a lot of time sitting in front of a desk. They're great for students as well because of their very affordable prices. The Smart Desk Core is height adjustable with a solid steel frame that has four programmable height settings for you to set up however you want. And their Ergo Chair Pro has everything that you'd be looking for in a desk chair with adjustable height and lots of flexibility in the lumbar support, which will support any seated position. I highly recommend checking them out. There'll be a link in the description. And again, if you use the code HOLDEN21 with capital letters, you will get a 5% discount. Okay, so now let's get back to our GitHub project boards. And this is something that I think is just such a great tool because it will help you keep track of what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing. And with the GitHub project boards, you can basically do a ton of really neat things that basically integrate seamlessly into your repository, which is why I prefer to use GitHub's project boards over anything else for progress tracking and project management. You can create this Kanban style of task management structure where you basically create issues for each thing that you believe needs to get done right now. And an issue is basically just a to-do item. It could be thought of as specific features and an example here could be set up Flutter project, build login screen, set up login logic. Now that you have these, you can start working on each specific task separately. And this is something that will really help you maintain that structure when writing your actual code, which is super important because we wanna in general just limit our scope for the code that we write. And this essentially just means that we wanna write or work on one thing at a time and not two things at a time. And this is something that can be very difficult when you're writing code for your own projects, because then we generally don't have this sort of structure. And this means that we often end up working on like 10 separate features at once, which often leads to a lot of messy codes and bugs down the line. I suggest building a routine of opening this page up every time you sit down to code and updating it regularly. Personally, I've found this to help a lot with reducing overwhelm when it comes to coding. By doing this, I have lots of smaller tasks that are quite manageable compared to just sitting down and thinking about this massive project that you have in front of you, where you have no idea which end to actually start on. Essentially like cleaning your apartment, instead of having one to do on your list that says clean apartment, which can feel like a Herculean task, you might have lots of smaller to do's like clean your desk, take out the trash, fold your laundry, vacuum the bedroom, etc. This makes each task feel less daunting and more manageable. I highly recommend doing this even for the smaller projects where it feels like this is way overkill to be doing because you wanna get into the habit of doing this stuff on autopilot. Next, we can go back to our local computer to set up a new Git branch called release. This is potentially something that you can skip if you're working on a really small project or if you're the only one working on the project. But in general, I would always say that it's better to err on the side of doing things the right way than to do things a little bit easier. And this is because you wanna get into the habit of doing or working in the right way so that down the line, once you get a job or once you start working on a bigger project with other people involved, then you're already used to working in the right way. After this, you can create another branch and this branch will be the feature branch. So this is specifically dedicated to the feature that you're going to build. So for our previous example, this first feature branch could be named Flutter Project. The feature branches are where you'll be writing your code. 
This is also a really good way to make sure that you stick to one specific task at a time and you don't go off on a random tangent, writing hundreds of lines of code on three different features at once, which usually leads to bugs and problems. And instead, this is a way to be more intentional with the code that you actually write. And a lot of difficulty in programming actually comes due to impatience and lack of structure. Which brings me to my next point, which is in regards to optimizing the way that you write your code. Use the every other day system, meaning that when you sit down to write your code, then every other day you basically sit down with the sole purpose of fixing your code. And I'm not talking about bug fixes here, I'm talking about refactoring and rewriting your working code to make it more efficient. We all know that when we've been trying to fix a bug for six hours, we start to get a little bit impatient and we comment out code that doesn't work and maybe even rewrite entire functions just to get things to work, leaving the original functions just sitting there even though it's no longer in use. We also create temporary variables that we never remove and all of these things just add up like unnecessary print statements that were used as sort of a last minute or last resort poor man's debugging system. So dedicating time to removing these things and simplifying the code that you write goes a long way. What I suggest doing is every other day or maybe once per week, you sit down and you dedicate the entire day to basically rewriting your shitty code. And this can be super helpful when it comes to maintaining readability of a project over time. And the side benefit is that by doing this, you learn how to write more efficient code. The next thing that I recommend is to be disciplined about naming conventions. So don't name your variables test underscore one or hello one, or don't name your functions function or calculate. You will save yourself so much time by just spending a couple of seconds coming up with a descriptive name instead of a quick name. Finally, I would say that you should pick the right text editor for the job. The way I currently do it is I use Sublime Text for smaller projects where I know it's just going to be a quick little script that might only need one file. And for larger projects, I tend to use Vim. And the reason is that it's a bit more efficient when it comes to editing large code bases. If I wasn't using Vim, I would use Visual Studio Code for the larger projects. Okay, so that's it. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And I also want to mention that I'm actually creating courses over on Patreon right now, which I think is fairly unique. And I want to thank everyone who's joined so far. Your support means the world to me. And I'm also going to be reinvesting all of the money that I make from there into this channel to make better videos. The first thing that I want to do is get a Canon EOS R, or no, a Canon R5 actually which right now I have a Canon EOS R, so that will be a great update and that will allow me to make some even cooler B-roll stuff and shoot some really cool slow motion stuff, get some more dynamic range into the camera. So uh, yeah, I just want to invest all that stuff back into the channel and make even better videos. So that's the idea behind that. If you want to support me on there, you can feel free to do that, but you also don't have to, of course. I appreciate you either way, which I hope that you know, but uh, yeah. That's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.